What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. And we are good to go, ladies and gentlemen. Harvey of Graphic Nature in the building. Hell yeah! <laughs> How are you, sir? I know it's I know it's very late where you are, so I appreciate you staying up, drinking some coffee, hanging with me. Uh, dude, yeah. album album <laughs> comes out in a week, man. How how stoked are you? Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I'm excited. I'm nervous because you know it's it's like when you're putting out a a piece of yourself you know for people to kind of do with as they will it's it's a bit of a uh you know it puts a bit of stress on you but i think people will like it so so i'm um yeah i'm excited man should be cool who did the who did you guys go to for production on on the new one which is titled uh, uh who are you when no one is watching and i want to know why you guys chose that title as well but uh first on production uh sam Bloor still so we went with him for our first record um and we just thought like who better to do the the second one where we've you know finally kind of found our foot in a bit more mm -hmm. um sam just knows us he knows us so well and it just felt right to do it and i think you know if this band does make a, a third album or anything else i think we'll always go to sam so you just kind of know when you find the right guy you just gotta you know just keep using the same formula because if it's working and it's working, there's people, there's people that yeah. I, I, through the through the the metal community and music scene that are like these guys are the next big thing. That's what I've been hearing. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's gonna be awesome, dude. When uh, when a song like Killing Floor, which I know is a little bit of an older one, but when that song kind of like takes off like it did, how how much did it kind of change the? Not I want to say how serious people took you guys, but I'm sure it opened some doors with the success of that song uh no <laughs> really not really dude, dude to be honest man i think that song just got um the views that it did because coincidentally it was the name of a video game and i think a lot of people just clicked it thinking it was to do with that uh we Wait. definitely got fans from it and like you know people like that song but yeah, it's a banger and that video is just, crazy it was ah, uh, cheers man <laughs> i think it was just dumb luck who do you guys go to for 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 the videos? Because each video is like kind of like has creepy elements in its own way, but it looks so professionally done. Uh, so we go we go with a few different people. We went with um, Ollie from a band called Static Dress. Um, we he done one of our first videos, and then Zach Pinchin does you know a few of them. Uh, a guy named Murray does a few, and then we've just gone with another guy uh, called Ollie Duncanson from. A band called the city is ours and he's done he done the video for something i'm not um and he's fucking awesome so when when coming up with an album title is a did was there a couple options that you remember that you guys were like this is it but then finally decided like that's not the album title if so can you can you let us know what those words what those were but then why did you ultimately decide on who are you when no one is watching uh that that was the first idea for the album name and we kind of pushed it to one side we were like yeah that's cool um let's think of something else i don't even remember what what kind of shit we thought about because it just wasn't as good and it didn't mean as much uh to us all personally about you know about the album has a a theme to it and it's not a fucking you know concept album it's not like a made-up story it's a thing that's happened to me and the the album title is just uh, it's like a reflection because i think a lot of us put on this um false kind of act in front of people to you know try and be someone that they're not and you know the, the real question that i like to ask is like here this is who i am when no one's watching like i collect action figures i play video games this is this is what i do and i, I love this shit so i i for me to hide that shit and not show it to anyone else is that that's depressing to me. So it, it's more of a question for everyone else to kind of read and be like, Oh shit. Like, what am I doing? What, like, how am I portraying myself to someone that doesn't know who I am? So hmm. what's but, your, yeah. what's your Holy grail action figure behind you? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, for me, I, I don't know what can be seen. Um, 
we can the we Batman? can see it. It's it's got like a little blur, but but I mean, I, it looks like there might be like a beast over there, the blue one from Marvel. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can tell that's him. Yeah. I can see the Wolverine. <laughs> uh, but do you have like a particular favorite? I mean, from X Men, it's always been Gambit. Like, what, I think whatever happened to the Gambit movie? Oh, uh, dude, I'm kind of glad they didn't do it. Oh, okay. Just after watching <laughs> like, uh, what was it, X Men Origins, and they fucked it up anyway. So. I don't know. I'm, I'm take take your time with it. I'm I'm good. I can wait. <laughs> okay, cool. Because it was supposed to be it was supposed to be that one that one actor that's kind of like a heartthrob, and I don't know if he would have been like aggressive enough and and cool enough yeah. to play Gamma. Yeah. But um, Channing Tatum. Yeah, that, that's who it is. Channing Tatum. That's yeah. The one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know. I know. We briefly discussed discussed about the uh, the trivia portion of the show. Uh, mm -hmm. You did not want to do the hot sauce. That's totally cool. But uh, would you still like to do that? Uh, the trivia portion. I do with almost every I'm guest we have. Dude, I'm down for whatever. I'm I'm awake now, so. Okay, cool. <laughs> Do you have a a uh, a favorite movie or TV show? Where if I look up one or the other, there's no way I stump you because you've seen this movie or TV show so many times. Um, shit. I mean, like I want to say Star Wars, but. You can literally you can like... pick out a particular Star Wars movie. You can get as in depth as you want to get. Um. Shit, man. I I think let's go with um. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Okay. Because I know a fair bit about that. <laughs> How did you guys know uh, Rude Records was was the the right home, right fit? Uh, we didn't. We took a chance, and it worked out really well. <laughs> did they? Did for, they for have a band of our size? I'm sorry. Sorry. Go on. No, you, you go. Um, for a band of our size, it's it was um more of a question of like who can support us in the way that we need as you know a band that had you know 5000 monthly listeners at the time or something it might not have even been that many it was just we needed someone that was going to be able to you know essentially a, a record label is investing in your band so they are the ones that are helping you produce this record that they're, they're giving you the money and being like you know go make something cool um we obviously don't have that amount of money as human beings because we're fucking, you know, in our thirties, we've got shit to pay for. We've got homes, wives, everything, whatever. Um, so, so then I think they were, they were one of the first choices for us at that level of, of, of um, our band. So yeah, it's just cool. They've been great for throughout the whole, the whole run. And I think, um, yeah, I don't know what's next because I think we're out of our contract after this album. So got to figure that one out. Might have to uh, increase the budget for, for the re-sign. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who knows, man. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do this uh, This Sunny in Philadelphia trivia. I've asked this particular question before to a previous guest, and they did not get it. Okay, shit. Sure. Here we go. Okay. In It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, do you recall the artist Dennis and D are listening to on the porch in the episode titled The Gang Goes on Welfare? Shit, no, but I, I know the song. Uh, and I can't fucking remember it for the life of me. How does it go? Fuck. It's completely gone from my mind. In my, in my head, I've got just stupid shit. Uh, yeah. Fuck, man. I can't even find it. But you, it. Picture, you could picture the episode. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're sat on the thing, and then uh, Matt comes up to them and has a go at them for being on welfare. Um Oh baby, you you got what I need. Is that song? It is correct. It. I'll give it to you. That is correct. Biz Markey, I don't, I don't just a friend. <laughs> you say you're just a friend. That one right yeah. there. Yeah, well so done. Good. Well done, dude. Can you go through uh, Harvey? Can you go through uh, before a show and after a show? What do you do to your voice to prepare to step on stage? And let's say, just hypothetically, you guys are playing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What do you do to take care of it? To be ready for the next night um i i do the melissa cross warm-ups absolutely they used, she used to sell like a dvd thing when we were younger and um i just kept that since i was a kid and then kind of implemented it into what i do now um, and that's that's about it i do that before i go on stage and then afterwards i don't know if i take the best care of my voice but it's mainly because like I'll come off stage, go straight to merch, speak to people. And then if we're with a band that's like willing to go out for a bit, 
we'll go out to like a bar that plays really shit pop music that I just know all the words to, and I'll just shout again. Um, just karaoke that then, away. Yeah, so I just kind of, you know, deal with it as it comes. I've only ever lost my voice once, and that was a while ago. So I, I think I'm fine. Cool. But, I'm gonna try one more time to stump you on on Philadelphia trivia. Here we go. This one I feel like okay. I feel like could be harder because it doesn't really give an episode context or anything. But at okay. some point in the show, Charlie references something that he believes he was in a past life. Oh shit. Oh man. It is a fictional creature. Shit, I don't even know. I can't, see, I can't even remember that. But then I'm sure when you say the answer, I'll be like, oh shit, yeah, of course. Well, I think we've kind of let a stump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll take it. Charlie references uh, that he has a deep connection to a horse and he believes he used to be a centaur <laughs> at some point. What what do you guys got going on uh, uh, the rest of the year? Is there anything that you... I mean, obviously the album comes out. What happens next? Are, is there any... Sometimes you guys can't tell us certain things that we want to know. I get that. But what are you allowed to tell us that we can look forward to the rest of the year? I mean, dude, I wish that was the case. Um, we've got our headline tour starts on the 15th uh, in UK. That's two weeks or two and a bit weeks long. And then I don't know. We've got one festival. I think it's called Burn It Down Festival. Um, I think we've just confirmed a tour for the end of the year. But I never like to believe it until I'm actually there on stage. So I just kind of wing it. But um, once that's, I, I guess if you see it's announced, that means that we got it. But right. uh, yeah, that'll does, be like does November, that, December Does time. this unannounced tour leave England by chance? No. Okay. Have you guys, have you guys ever left uh, and gone to Europe or the States or anything like that? Been to Europe. Yeah. yeah. How was that? Where'd, um, where'd you go over there? I think with with this band it was just Germany, um, which was cool. Like we we had we we toured with a band called CU Space Cowboy. Oh yeah. yeah. And we had done like four or five shows in Europe with them, and then the rest of them was UK. That's a, that that's, was really cool. That's Connie Connie in the group. Uh, yeah yeah yeah. That's Connie's awesome. They're around. a wild <laughs> wild live show. Wild live yeah, show. Yeah yeah yeah. So Perfect. good. Hell yeah. When you, when it's uh let's say you said you said burn it down fest is the mm -hmm. okay, let's say let's say burn it down fest ends up being you know, there's 20,000 people watching you guys. Tonight's a night that the show went good. There was no hiccups, blah blah blah. It's party in time after after the show. What's your go-to mm -hmm. munching meal? Uh kebab shop pizza. What kind of pizza? <laughs> kebab do, do you guys have kebab shops like in oh. in the states? Somewhere, yeah, but but I've never okay. heard of a kebab pizza. Okay, cool. So it's it's not like together, but it's like a really shit pizza that you can get from a kebab shop, and they're like you know five pounds for a big thing, and it just tastes like cheese on toast or like a grilled cheese. But I think that's why I like it because it's so crap. <laughs> I'm and, for yeah, sure. <laughs> that is hilarious. Do you? Ev everyone has a worst show ever. Everything mm -hmm. went wrong. What did you guys learn from it? And can you tell us what actually went wrong on this particular gig? Yeah. Uh, the worst song, the worst show ever was on that Space Cowboy run. Or it was it was over that tour or the tour that we did with Cancer Bats. Basically, our whole rig, um, like the, the transformer in one of our amps completely exploded. And we got three songs in. And I turned around to my guitarist, Pete, and I was like, oh, are we good? Like, what's going on? And he was like, no, nah, man, it's, it's done. And I was like, oh, OK, cool. So this has been cool. I'm sorry about this, but we, we can't do anymore because this shit don't work. Um, and we had to spend the next day just fixing it. But I guess the thing that we learned was just get good equipment that doesn't break. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Double check your, your soldering and all that stuff to, uh, to make sure. Yeah. OK. Yeah, exactly that. Harvey, is there anything that we did not discuss today that you think uh, people that that see this interview when we put it on YouTube tomorrow morning uh, that they that they need to know or anything that you want to plug and promote? Uh, the album comes out July twelfth. Um, listen to the songs, watch the videos on YouTube. Um, if you really want to deep dive into the subject matter of the album, 
there's a Kerrang interview that I'll send you, I'll send to you on Instagram that you okay. could put in the description. Um, and that'll explain it all and just give you something to like have in mind when you're listening to this record. But yeah, other than that, did, did just... the Kerrang do like a, like a song by song breakdown? Is that what you mean? Like, uh, no. So we had a, we had a cover, um, in April and it was basically just a complete conversation of everything that had been going on for the past year and what led us to making an album so soon after the last one um and everything just kind of came into like initially we were only going to do an ep uh not even an ep it was just two songs and that was fractured into the grave and then after that we were like you know what like there are bands that don't release albums straight away and we were like okay cool well that's not something we should do and then it kind of switched itself and we were like that's something bands don't do let's just fucking do it then it's because the you, know, you know yeah we're already the fucking underdogs of everything so let's just do some shit and yeah in this era man it's fucking I, I hate to admit it but it's just so much content has to be spewed out in order for people to start giving a shit about you and i hate releasing singles i, I think an album should be appreciated in its whole kind of form but you know if we do that, no one's going to listen because you have to build up right. the hype to get the formulas to slightly changed since we were kids. Yeah, exactly. Like gone are the days where you go into a record shop, pick mm. up something because it looks cool, take it home, listen to it. And if it's, it's like a, a fucking um, gamble, like you, you don't know whether you're going to like it or not, but that was the excitement of it. Just finding that was shit. the fun. So, Final yeah. question for you, sir, as someone that yeah. is heavily tattooed myself, what is your favorite mm -hmm. tattoo and what is your most painful tattoo? Uh, my favorite are probably my hands. I don't know where they, they where they sit in the. Uh. Go like go like fingers down style. Yeah, east blue. Okay. What are all the what are all the notes underneath the 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 letters? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna come this way. Uh, this says hope in Arabesh from Star Wars. Okay. Um, this is the oh shit. This is the from The Witcher, uh, the video game. East blue is from One Piece. It's where the adventure starts. And then these two hand tattoos I just got because I, I love them. And my tattoo artist, I started going to him when he was an apprentice. And he was like, uh, he was like, just don't come for me for like hands or anything. And then, you know, 10 years down the line, I was like, dude, we're doing my hands. <laughs> and he was like, oh, man, really? Fuck yeah. And they're, surprisingly, they're the ones that have stayed in the most. I've had these for about five years now and they're still so bright and so colorful and i don't know how because obviously you use your hands every day and they they fade over time and stuff but shit maybe i just got lucky is, nice. there, is there one that was the most painful though uh yeah here oh yeah like yeah right oh, up, right up in knee. right up inside right in here yeah yeah that's what sucks and top of the knee i like i've only got one of my knees done but i will not get the other one done because it hurts so much i don't have the knees <laughs> yet so i'll i'll not look forward to that pain it's, yeah, it sucks <laughs> album comes out july 12th on rude records mm -hmm. it's called who are you when no one is watching ladies and gentlemen harvey of graphic nature thank you sir this is a blast i appreciate you i'll send you the youtube link late tonight it'll it'll drop oh, tomorrow yeah. but uh this is this is a lot of fun man i appreciate you yeah no worries dude thank you for having me appreciate it graphic nature yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Enjoy, enjoy <laughs> your, your night. Get some rest. And uh, we look forward to the release, man. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. See you soon, man. Cheers.